Thanks for staying with us. Now, following tensions gripping the country between Biafra agitators and security forces, Nigerian President Mohamed Buhari has reiterated that his administration will not bow down to demands of separatists. The president's reaction and decision to crack down on agitators and criminal elements in the southeast has caused very reactions from across the country. While some agree with the president's approach, others have stated otherwise. Osaroge Ogbonwa has more. President Mohamed Buhari said his administration will shock those who want to destroy the system. During a meeting with the INEC leadership, the president said, in quote, Those misbehaving today are too young to be aware of the destruction and loss of lives during the Nigerian Civil War. Those of us in the field for 30 months who went through the war will treat them in a language they understand. End of quote. A cross-section of Nigerians have described the statements as unpresidential and threatening. Unpresidential is quite reprehensible. I think every Nigerian should come out and condemn the statement because we need to break down that statement to understand what the president was trying to do by putting out that statement. And look at his choice of words. We would teach them in the language they understand. What does he mean by that? Basically, he was saying that, oh, older Igbos did not tell the younger Igbos the horror of the war. We would revisit that war. We will revisit the horror of that war to them. For him to have come out and said the things he had said, the way, you know, he said them, right, in the context and the manner in which he said them, on the platform in which in which he said, he said it, right, just, you know, is a classic textbook case of, you know, how not to understand and how not to communicate your non-understanding of a very, very sensitive situation. Analysts have also condemned this development, which they have described as a seemingly military approach. I mean, even without the president's reaction yesterday, the possibility of, you know, the security um, authorities uh, are carrying out any of the activities without, you know, the sept uh, you know, under the sector of, you know, human rights or, or you know, without anyone being susceptible to human rights abuses was probably non-existent. Our security authorities have shown and have a well-documented track record of human rights abuses. So that wasn't going to happen. The president's statement is probably just um, amplified the space, you know, and the opportunity uh, uh, for that to happen, which, you know, which is, uh, you know, which is tragic and unfortunate because, like, you rightly point. The fact of the matter is, no matter the level of militarization um, of the landscape in Nigeria, that will not stop people from agitating. The solution is always dialogue. It is far better for us to judge on now, either convoke a sovereign national conference or go back to so the ones did by Jonathan's regime. In its response, the opposition People's Democratic Party advised the president to stop issuing threats and act decisively to end insecurity in the country. Osao Gie Ogmawa, Plus TV Africa. Interestingly, a day after, Twitter deleted the president's tweets, insisting that it uh, violates its rules. This obviously didn't go down well with the federal government as it stated that Twitter's mission in Nigeria is suspicious by the Minister of Information and Culture. Did the social media platform go too far? Osaroge Ogbonwa examines the implication of the action against Nigerian president. Social media site Twitter removed on Wednesday a post by Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari threatening punishment for regional secessionists blamed for attacks on government buildings. The social media firm says Buhari's tweet referring to the 1967-1970 civil war violated its abusive behavior policy. In reaction to this, many Nigerians, senior lawyers, activists, and also the Ohanez and Digbo have praised the social media giant for the steps taken and said it's a warning sign to President Buhari. The federal government in its reaction said Twitter's mission in Nigeria was suspicious. The mission of Twitter in Nigeria is very, very suspect. As, to, as Twitter deleted the violent tweets, that in Nam Dikani. I've always said it, that those who handle the uh, communication of the president are his greatest enemies. Somebody who is managing the Twitter handle of the president 
who is supposed to arrange, even if the president has made a mistake when he was talking, or in other sense of certain things, the managers who are a peer consultant. Any person who handles that kind of data is supposed to not package the president's record. Mr. President has made it very clear. Mr. President was speaking strictly to troublemakers. People want to undermine the security of the Nigerian people, for which is constitutionally empowered to ensure that the security of the Nigerian people is in place. And this process has made it a point of duty. Since 2015, when their political party lost power, that they are going to do everything within their means to make the country of governable. In reference to Twitter rules and policies, some have argued for or against deleting the president's tweet and if it infringes on the president's rights to expression. There's nothing suspicious about the, tweet, uh, about the actions of uh, uh, Twitter. I mean, if you read that tweet, sir, you will know that if an ordinary citizen like you and, uh, you and, you and I, or if I've said this on air, you say on air, if you expect to come and pick you up, we have seen uh, the terrorist leader, Enam Bikanu, make reference to killing, make reference to uh, turning Nigeria into a zoo. And uh, I'm not sure Twitter has deleted any of his tweets, except if I'm wrong. So, like Alaji Lai Mohammed rightly said, I think the interests of some uh, organizations. In Nigeria, it's something that Nigerians should start thinking about. From being called unpresidential, there have been calls for better handling of the president's social media accounts and a better approach towards dousing attention across the country. Osaogi Ogbonwa, Plus TV Africa. While varying reactions are also symptomatic of the divisiveness among opinion leaders, everyone is advised to X-ray actions and inactions from the lens of objectivity rather than ethnic and religious sentiment. Now, this is on humanitarian organization. The International Committee of Red Cross, established almost one and a half century ago in 1863, says it has not drilled from its core mandate of helping people affected by conflict and armed violence. The group stated this during a courtesy visit to Plus TV Africa's office in Lagos by its spokesperson. Plus TV Africa senior correspondent Kyle De La Dendi tells us more. While it is debatable whether Nigeria is at war, the International Committee of the Red Cross is not leaving anything to chances as it continues to provide services to civilian population in the Northeast who are affected by the insurgency. Speaking on the challenges faced by its officers, the RCRC spokesman in Nigeria highlights the problem of access. Working with the, rest, with the International Committee of the Red Cross is actually a daunting task. Uh, a lot of uh, issues come up and uh, yeah, working in conflict situation because the organization is given the mandate to protect and assist people that are affected by armed conflict and violence. And this is what we've been doing in Nigeria. A lot of uh, issues that have to do with access. Uh, most of the times what we want to do is to protect and assist people that are affected by violence and conflict. Uh, if we don't have access, then this is really going to be a big challenge because the populations out there are going to continue to suffer. Uh, there would be no food. Uh, to support them with. There will be no medication. So this is really a big concern to us. Sadly, some of the ICRC had had to pay the supreme price while trying to save the civilian population. These, the body says, would not deter them from carrying out their functions dutifully. Uh, the humanitarian consequences in the northeast of Nigeria, where most of our operations are, is actually very, very... Uh, severe because we see a lot of people who don't have access to medication, to food, to uh, if you like uh, shelter and so on and so forth. So these are some of the challenges uh, that the organization is suffering because a lot of needs are out there and then our hands are tied. He explains that his neutral role is never called to question. 
ICRC is a neutral organization, uh, a neutral humanitarian organization that is independently working to assist people that are affected by conflict and violence. Uh, this is uh, our principle of operations. We try as much as possible to inform all the actors uh, to the conflicts, uh, both uh, the, 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 the civilian population and also the armed groups. Uh, of course, with the armed forces of Nigeria, that we are a neutral organization. And what we do is mostly to assist civilian populations. Uh, this is what we do. Of course, uh, we also call on all the actors to the conflict to respect the International Committee of the Red Cross and also by extension to respect all humanitarian actors that are there supporting people that are affected. The harmed groups are expected to obey the rule of engagement which protecting ICRC officers and other humanitarian groups fall into. Only when this is followed to the letter, the unwarranted attacks faced by these good-spirited citizens may not end in the nearest future. Kaya Dilade in the Plus TV Africa. And finally, on this week's package, the attention is now shifted to Menstrual Hygiene Day. A group known as Center for Water and Environment Development has urged parents to educate female words on menstrual health and hygiene so as to know what to do when they are experiencing the flow for the first time. The project manager of the group stated this in Yola during an event to mark today. This year's celebration centered on girls at the secondary school, particularly government girls' secondary schools in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, with the aim of educating them on the need to know what to do at the first day of menstruation. The project manager, Dori Sakama, says it is pertinent for the awareness on the female words in order to reduce the rate at which young girls always fall a victim on the first day of menstruation. She urged parents to always be friendly to their female words at the early stage so that they will know the need for. Not just mothers, even fathers, that's the parents. And that's why if you see in our program is we invite boys we, so that we catch them young. But eventually they become fathers. If the mother will be shine, at least the father will be able to tell the mother, have you educated this your child? Have you prepared this your girl child before her first period? And mostly they start from age nine. Some of the students thanked the organization for the awareness and expressed happiness, saying their awareness will go a long way in guiding them on what to do at the first day of the menstruation. Um, I was afraid. I thought it was easy. Then I went and told my mom, then she now called my aunt in this solar town. She now asked her if I have boyfriend. Then my aunt was now like, no, I don't have boyfriend. Then from there she now called my brother from Lagos. Then my brother now told her that it's not happening because I was at a very tender age when I started it. Then my brother now How old were you then? I was nine. Okay. Then my brother now told her that it's a normal thing for a girl to start crying. She told me that any time I see blood flowing from my body, I should not be afraid. It is menstruation. And she taught me how to use the pad. With this one-day awareness on the celebration of World Menstrual Hygiene Day, it is expected that parents will take up their responsibility in educating female words at the early stage. Well, it is possible to create a world where no woman or girl is held back because she menstruates. This means a world in which every woman and girl are empowered to manage their menstruation safely, hygienically, with confidence and without shame. And that's a wrap now. But before we go, let's still please remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram. And just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Thanks for watching. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.